Hi, so here's your study guide for the Unit B test. Remember, fill this out. You get 10 extra points on your test. We're talking about constraints and decision making. Larry's having a Labor Day bash. Larry is planning a huge Labor Day party that he does every year for his friends and family. Nothing in that sentence is important to us. He has $100 set aside, so that's important to us, um, to spend on food or the for the party. He is trying to decide how many pounds of chicken to buy and how many steaks to buy. Really not a whole lot of information we need in that section other than the $100. Chicken sells for $2 a pound, that's important, while the steaks sell for $10 per steak, that's important. We're gonna write an equation using two variables to represent Larry's purchasing decision. We're gonna define our variables. Well, we just did right here, it's done for you. C is gonna be pounds of chicken. S is going to be numbers of steaks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that one's actually done for you. You're going to, oh, we're going to write the equation also. So chicken's worth $2 a pound. So 2C, right? 2 is with chickens. 2 is with the C that stands for chickens. Plus $10 per steak. All right, and we want to spend $100, so we're going to say equal to $100. You're going to use your equation to figure out how many steaks you can buy if he gets 25 pounds of chicken. So the only thing that's going to happen there is I'm going to take this 25 and I'm going to plug it into that C. Remember, use parentheses when you plug a number into a letter. I don't know why I didn't do this, but I'm going to use a uh, script S. And that's going to equal 100. So next, I've got 2 times 25 is 50 plus 10s equals $100. So now it's just a simple two-step equation. I want to move my I'm look for distrib distribution. I don't have any variable to the left. It's already there. Now we're going to move our constant. Our constant is 50. So we're going to subtract 50. That gives me 10s equals 50. Now we're going to move our coefficient, which is 10. We're going to divide by 10. And S equals 50 divided by 10 is 5. So if he gets 25 pounds of chicken, he can get 5 steaks. Remember, give me the unit, and in this case, it's steaks. How many pounds of chicken can he get if he buys, excuse me, buys 8 steaks? So again, we're going to take that 8. That's how many steaks he's going to buy. We're going to plug it into that S right there. So that's going to become 2C plus 10 times 8, still equal 100. So nothing else changes. Take the 8, plug it in. The rest of the equation stays the same. So that's really going to become 2C. 10 times 8 is 80 equals 100. Two-step equation, variables already on the left, there's no distribution, move your constant. I should be getting good at these, and most of y'all are. Next, it becomes 2c equals 20. <clears throat> move the coefficient, divide by two, c equals 10. Remember, that is 10 pounds of chicken. Make sure you tell me the unit, right? In this case, it's pounds of chicken, not just the unit, but the units of what we're talking about. So now we're going to solve your equation for steaks in terms of pounds of chicken. Because all that's telling us to do is we're going to get that S by itself. All right, so if I've got 2C plus 10S <coughs> excuse me, equals 100, well, you can do this by doing a do-undo chart. Or... You can just move the 2C over. So that becomes 10S equals negative 2C plus 100. And then divide by 10. But I'm going to divide everything by 10. So let me rewrite that. So I'm going to divide by 10. And that's going to become S equals the negative. That's going to reduce to one-fifth C plus 10. So all this told me to do, solve your equation for stakes. All that means is get S by itself. That's what we've done. So we're done. 
Um, so now we're gonna graph the equation you just came up with in problem number four. So this is basically in y equals mx plus b. Remember, m is your slope, b is your y-intercept, Remember, we're going to number them using our slope. So we're going to go up by ones. And we're going to go by fives on the x-axis. Again, on a test, this will be numbered for you. You will not have to number your x-y coordinate. Okay, so now, so that means our slope is negative one over five. And remember our y-intercept is our starting point. And that tells us to start at 10 on the y-axis. So I'm gonna go to 10. And now I need to go down one and to the right five. Down one, and remember we numbered by fives this way. So there, down one, right five, down one, right five. Down one, right five, down one, right five, down one, right five. And I forgot my ruler, so I'm gonna just try to keep this as straight as I can. So there's that, oh, we need to label this too. These are steaks, and this is pounds of chicken, all right? So now you notice it's a straight line. Now we're gonna find the minimum and maximum pounds of chicken he can buy. Well, just follow this line. Right here, that's 10 steaks. How many chickens is that? So zero, so it's zero chickens is the minimum. And over here is 50 chickens. So the max is 50 pounds of chickens. pounds of chicken. And then next, find the minimum and maximum number of steaks he can buy. Well, he could buy 10. If he bought 10, he'd get zero chickens, or zero pounds of chicken. And it makes sense because if the steaks is, are $10 each, right, and that's what this told us, 10 times 10 is 100. Well, that's the most he can sell. And then the max, I'm sorry, I did this backwards. The max is 10 and the min is zero steaks. Because if he bought 50 pounds of chicken, he wouldn't buy any steaks. Sorry for the mix up. Give me a second. All right, so next we're going to convert five decimeters to meters. Let me find our stair step, okay? So we're going from, again, this will be given to you on the test, this part, this stair step. We're going from decimeters to meters. Remember, the one letter is base unit. If I was going to this M, it would have another letter. In this case, it would have an M, M. So I'm going from decimeters to meters, one to the left. So I'm gonna take that five, that of the decimal there, and I'm gonna move it one to the left. So now it's gonna become there, so that's gonna be 0.5 meters. Convert two milliliters to liters. Milliliters has two letters, so it's here. Two liters, which is a basic unit. So I'm gonna go one, two, three to the left. There's two, there's my decimal to begin with. I'm gonna go one, two, three to the left. Guys, you have to show me you moving the decimal. There's not a lot of work to show here, but you have to show me how you're moving the decimal. Next, we're gonna go from 38.2 decagrams to centigrams. So we're going from deca to centi. So we're gonna move one, two, three to the right. So 38.2, and I need to move it one, two, three to the right. Remember, fill in the empty humps with zeros. So that's gonna be 38,200 centigrams. Next, I'm gonna go from 0.05 kilometers to centimeters, 
kilometers to centimeters. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five to the right. I start at 0 0.05 and I go one, two, three, four, five to the right. I don't need this verse zero because my decimal is over here. All right, I need it if the decimal is to the left of it. If the decimal is to the right, I don't need that first zero. So that's going to become 5,000 centimeters. Next, I'm going to go from 75 milliliters to kiloliters. ML has two letters, so it's not a basic unit. It's one over here. So I'm going to go from 75 milliliters to kiloliters, which is one, two, three, four, five, six to the left. So that's the most we're ever going to move a decimal. Starts there, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six to the left. Fill in all my humps. That's going to be 0 .000075 kiloliters. Next, we're going to convert 6.5 meters to centimeters. Meters is a base unit. I'm going to go two to the right to get to centimeters. Fill in my humps. That's become 650 centimeters. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to go from milligrams to grams. MG has two letters, so it's this M, not this one. And then to G, which is a basic unit, I'm going to go one, two, three to the left. So I'll start with 2007, there's my decimal. I'm gonna go three to the left. And that's gonna give me 2.007 grams. And then the last one like this, I'm gonna go from milligrams to hectograms. So that's milligrams, two letters. So we're starting here, all the way to there. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five to the left. One, two, three, four, five to the left. I need that first zero because it's after the decimal. That's gonna be hectogram. You can do a capital H there if you want. When I was taught it, we used capital H's. I think they've done away with that now, but not a big deal. You get the two letters right, I'm gonna give you credit. Number 16, Michelle weighs 71.7 decagrams. What is her weight in centigrams? So all we're doing is we're going from decagrams to centigrams. So we're going from decagrams to centigrams. So we're moving one, two, three to the right. One, two, three to the right. That gives me 71,700 centigrams. Remember your answer is always going to be what we're going to. Last one, Sally is on the all city track team and has to run the 400 meter dash. How many decameters will she run? So we're going from meters to decameters. <coughs> and on our stair step, meters is a basic unit. It only has one letter, so it's not that one. It's this M. And we need to go to decameters, which is one to the left. So we're going to take our 400, where the decimal would be there, go one to the left, and that's going to become 40 decameters. I'm going to put DK. Let me rewrite that. 40 decameters. And that is it.